When I installed this deck in August last year, immediately several people commented in the comments section that I'd installed the decking the wrong way up. And this week, an Instagram post saying the grooves should be underneath went viral and hit the national press. So I thought I'd do a quick video this week to show you why it's not always as straightforward as you think, and to give you all the information that you need to make the right choice when buying your own decking and to decide which way up to install it. So what's all this about? Well, a North Londoner posted on Instagram this week a public service announcement that if you have your decking grooves face up, you've done it wrong. In her case, the decking was one-sided, flat on one side and grooves on the other. So it was absolutely right to put the grooves underneath. As that way, there's air circulation between the timber frame below and the underside of the decking board. To prevent moisture and mold buildup and therefore protecting the subframe, but also the underside of the deck itself from rotting. But as a Daily Mail article went on to say, this isn't the whole picture because there is an enormous variation in decking available in this country. It's often single but also double-sided so you can actually choose which way up it goes. So you haven't necessarily got your decking the wrong way up, as the Instagrammer implied, if your grooves are facing up. And the situation gets more complicated because there is actual single-sided decking where the grooves are designed to face upwards. And this is the situation I've got. Confused? Well, that is precisely the reason I'm doing today's video. So I've got a bit of useful background to this from the Timber Decking and Cladding Association website. Decking has obviously been a big thing in countries like the US and Australia long before we caught on over here. And they all advocate using the grooves face down to allow for the airflow underneath the boards. And when demand grew in the UK, grooves facing upwards apparently came about because of a collaboration between a manufacturer and a high profile designer thinking grooves would be better for the UK climate and offer more grip. Now you'll hear a lot of people say that groove boards don't offer more grip. I disagree with that. And whilst people say that the grooves assist with water runoff, this obviously isn't the case if like me, you've got a flat deck. And with manufacturers now offering dual purpose boards with two surface style options, the TDCA conclude by saying it's up to you to decide which style you prefer. Take my deck for example, bought from my local farm supply straight DIY store, I love the specs at 3.6 meters long by a whopping 32 millimeters thick. But it's single sided, how do I know this? Because it's not beveled on the underside, nice splinters on your feet if you put that face up. It's got a manufacturer's stamp on the underside, again that wouldn't look ideal if that was on the surface. And it has two V-notch grooves on the flat underside, I'm guessing to both help with protecting against warping but also potentially to assist with that airflow, although I can't see these V-notch grooves doing a great deal of good. Compare that to the groove side, and we've got these lovely beveled edges on the side that's clearly designed to be face up. If you disagree with that, then you also disagree with the opinions kindly offered by everyone on the community post I put on my YouTube page this week, when everyone unanimously said I'd installed the deck incorrectly. So mine is single-sided, but what are the other options? Well, I made a quick trip to Kidderminster on Friday and dropped into my local timber merchants Harlow's where I bought the skirtings for this video link to which is coming up on screen now along with a lot of other stuff over the years. They kindly gave me a few samples of their decking which is more of a double-sided design but with some interesting variations. I then dropped into B&Q where they had a different design again of varying qualities thicknesses and lengths but nothing getting close to the 3.6 meter lengths of this decking the beauty of which is I can span the entire deck without having any joins. And then build base do yet another variation on this design. And then there's composite decking, massively more expensive than wood, but eliminates any rotting concerns, typically with grooves on both sides, but also wood effect decking like this. So what's the conclusion to all this? Well, the groove up haters will point to how quickly it rots or gets grimy if you have your grooves facing up. However, if you look at mine seven months after the install, after a pretty nasty winter with almost continuous rainfall and my entire garden and paths covered in moss and the decking is actually looking remarkably good. Just a bit dirty as you'd expect. And the concerns I had when I built it about standing water just haven't materialized. What I am gonna do in a few months time when the weather gets consistently warmer and it's time to next drain the tub is give the deck a good scrub, pressure wash and clean with this and then I'm gonna seal it with this premium decking oil. Both of these I bought from Harlow's yesterday. This is just a neutral color. I don't want a particular stain on the deck, but what it will do is seal it and probably make it easier to keep it clean. You might ask me why I didn't do this when I lay the deck. Well, the honest answer is I was a bit knackered at the time after the, a week of building it. But actually, 
The advice is not to seal it straight away because of course the deck comes with a tantalized layer on it. So you're meant to leave it a few months before applying the oil. If you don't have the luxury of doing that, then I guess you could give it a good agitate with this to open up the surface before applying that oil. So I guess the conclusion I should leave you with for your project is make sure you have grooves underneath the deck if you can to maximize that air circulation. Not to mention a good five millimeter gap between each decking board. I didn't leave a gap initially and I was shocked a week later when I took it up just how damp the substructure was and that was during the heat of the summer. Now the underside of my deck is admittedly not ideally designed for air circulation so as a precaution I've bitumened the underside of the deck and also the subframe of the decking itself which should substantially prolong the life of the structure. And as for the top of the deck, choose a style that you like the design of and which isn't going to be too slippy underfoot as well as comfortable. Personally, I think a smooth board is more of a hazard than a groove board. However, there are some fantastic products out there like this Osmo anti-slip decking oil or this water-based version from Oatrol. They do some quite interesting products. I had this knocking about and used it on the new planter that I've had made to stop it rusting. Might do a video on that if you're interested. Bottom line, a well-maintained deck is going to give you very minimal problems in terms of grip underfoot and also grime, mould, moisture buildup. And you might think about composite decking if you can afford it. Oh, and get ordering because apparently there's a nationwide shortage of decking right now. So I hope you found that useful. If you have, it'd be great if you could give it the thumbs up below. As usual, I'll put details of the stuff I've referred to in today's video in the description below the video, which of course you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your computer by clicking on the show more button. Stay tuned because next week I'm back onto the wardrobe build, which is progressing. I just wasn't able to get a video out on it this weekend. Oh, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. It means so much to me. You can do that by clicking on the link there and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.